Yeah, so I'm really excited to be here to show off the uh, Hans Power Apps web part that Hugo built. Being a heavy Power Apps user and SharePoint user myself, I know that this web part's really going to make a lot of my fellow Power Appers excited because it really addresses some of the long-standing feature requests, which I'll show off today. But first, I want to start off by showing the current out-of-the-box Power Apps web part in SharePoint so that we can kind of do a quick comparison. So I have a SharePoint page here, and I'm going to go in and we'll add the out of the box Power Apps web part. And with this, we'll notice that we only have two things that we can configure. One, obviously, passing it in the web link or ID of your application. So to get that, you would go to Power Apps, find the app you want to embed in SharePoint, click the dots, go to the settings. Oops, sorry, go to details, not settings. <laughs> And then you can either copy the app ID or the web link, whichever one um, in the web part will take that. So I'm going to copy that link. And you paste that in. And as soon as you do that, it updates the web part and you see your embedded power app. But really, with the out of the box, that's the only thing we can configure other than showing or hiding a border for that. So if I publish this, you'll kind of see. Um, so one of the main feature requests that you'll see in the community is this current web part, you can't really make it take up the full real estate of the screen. It's kind of forced at a certain aspect ratio on here. So even though this is a tablet-based power app, it's not taking up the full real estate of the screen. So that's one of the first things that Hugo's web part helps to solve. So if I go to my enhanced power app web page, and we'll add in Hugo's enhanced web part, You'll see that we obviously have much more different configuration options that we have. So first, I'm going to put in that same link to my time off power app. And you'll see first thing, without me configuring anything else, it's taking up way more real estate and looks quite a bit better on the page. So that alone, to me, is a huge benefit of this web part. Uh, you'll see that if we expand out the appearance section, so we can take advantage of certain aspect ratios that you would be familiar to you if you already in Power Apps. So for example, I have this Power App open. If I go to File, Settings, and Screen Size, these are the same aspect ratios that you currently get within Power Apps. So you can take advantage of those in his enhanced web part. So if I could leave it at the 16 by 9, it looks pretty good. Uh, but I can also do like fixed height. So I can come in here and put in like a fixed height of 500 whatever my needs may be, um, and use it that way. So pretty powerful with that alone. But one of the things that gets me really excited about this web part is the ability to pass in dynamic properties. Okay, So to me, this is a game changer. Um, this is something that I personally wanted for a while, and I know everyone in the community has. But to be able to have a scenario where you notice I already have a list here on this page um, with some list formatting on it, and this is the list is the back end of my Power App. So wouldn't it be great if we could have these two talks? So when I select one of these entries from my time off request list, it could just take me directly to that entry in the edit screen of my app. So we can do that now with this web part in the dynamic properties. So all we have to do is turn on the past dynamic properties option here. And then it's going to tell us uh, what source do you want to connect to. So we only have one list on here. So I'm going to connect that to my time off request list. And then we just use the drop down to select, OK, what do we want to pass into that? So in my case, I'd like to get the ID of this currently selected item and pass that here into the Power App. So I'm going to select the column containing the filter value option. And he couldn't have made it more easier because we can just use the drop downs and point and click. So now I'm just going to select my ID field. And then the only other thing we have to do is specify the parameter name. So this is the parameter value that Power Apps is going to look for so that it knows how to get the uh, parameter value. So I'm going to call this ID because that's what I already have coded into my Power App. So now all I have to do is like click out of this. Let's republish this app. And let's see, I'm going to select this one here. And you see as soon as I do kind of reevaluates and it takes me directly to that record in my Power App automatically <laughs> so I can go in and make any changes if I need to. Really, really powerful 
uh, application and how this works um, from the Power App side of things. So since we the web part kind of configures what we're passing into it, all we have to do in your app is go into your app on start. Okay. And you can just do a check. So you see I'm checking to see if there's a parameter using the param function called ID. And if that's not blank, I'm going to set a global variable called selected item to the selected item from my entry with that parameter value. So that sets the item. And then I'm saying navigate to my edit screen if that parameter value is there. So in my edit screen, I'm just have a form control and I'm setting that item's property of the form control to that selected item value. So it just gets passed in seamlessly. Okay. So again, game changer here. Now the other thing though, so the, wait, there's more that this will do is theming. <laughs> so um, if you have a SharePoint theme and you want that to apply to your Power App, we can pass your SharePoint theme elements to the Power App so you have one consistent holistic brand. So we can select the theme option and we can control all of these different theme, theme variants from SharePoint to pass that into Power Apps. So for example, I could take our button background hovered variable. And once I select that, I can pass that into Power Apps. So I already have this kind of wired up. So if I go into, let's republish this, one of these items again, to go into that edit screen, let me just kind of refresh the page. Uh, let's see, let's select that one this time. Well, I can make it change this background color based off of the theme. And I happen to just select one where it's already blue and it matches the exact. Uh, but it's really simple to wire up in the Power App side of things as well. Um, so if we go back to the Power App, you see that I have this rectangle control. So I, again, I can target um, a parameter, which I did in the app on start called selected theme, and I can pass in a parameter of theme. And then I can go into my object, and I can say if that parameter is not blank, use the color value that I've passed it in, otherwise use whatever hard-coded one I have. So again, game changer. This is something that we could do in Teams. There's like a Teams theme that we could hear it. We can get pulling the, the, uh, the theme in Teams, but we didn't have that yet in SharePoint, and now we do. So awesome use case here, and I'm super excited about this and happy to show it. And with that, I'm going to turn it over to Hugo so he can show the code behind piece of this. Thank you. Uh, let me share my code. OK, so if you look at the out of the box web part, really, this is the out of the box web part. If you look at the code that it produces, it just produces an iframe that has a whole bunch of parameters and a whole bunch of things. So the first thing that I did, and I'm sorry, this this code is actually embarrassingly simple. Uh, it's leveraging a lot of uh, built-in capabilities in the SPFX uh, framework. But all I did here is I took the iframe, uh, reproduced a URL, and then I added some extra functionality. So the first thing that I did in my web part itself is I actually imported the dynamic property from the component base so that I can make dynamic properties. And I'm sorry, I have a hard time saying that word in English, property. Uh, then what I did is I imported some uh, dynamic property pane a field set so I can actually show those dynamic properties in the property pane. I also use a new control that I've created for the uh, PMP property, uh, reusable property controls which is an HTML control that allows you to embed HTML in the property pane, just make it easy for you to do that. Then what I do is I define a dynamic property of type string, which is going to be the value that we want to pass uh, as a dynamic property. I also keep track of the name of that thing. Uh, the other thing that I do is I make the web part theme aware. So I, I do capture the theme provider and the theme variant. And then in the on init of the web part, I actually capture the context of the web part to grab the theme provider. And uh, I do get the theme variant. And I create, I subscribe to the theme changed events so I can refresh the web part if the theme changes. And then all I really do is I get the value of the dynamic property if it's available. Otherwise, I just say that it's not defined. 
while I'm there, I'm also grabbing the locale, so the, the current language uh, configuration of the, of the current context, so that we can pass that information to the, the uh, Power Apps as well. And then I grab the client width. Uh, the web part is actually very well aware of its own width uh, and trying to get the components inside the web part to be aware of their width is, doesn't always work so well. But if you let the web part notify its, its children elements that it's been resized, it's a lot easier to do this. So that's what I do here. And then really, this is probably cheesy code, but I just calculate the aspect ratio based on the selection that's been made. And that allows me to calculate the height of the web part uh, based on the width of the web part. And I pass all this information to the component. And then in the property pane itself, I do use my property pane HTML that allows me to, to embed HTML. You'll notice, by the way, that I'm using a function that I don't think a lot of people are aware of. It's a text.format. Uh, it's a great utility that allows you to, if you have localized strings that have placeholders in your localized string, you can actually use text.format to inject content in localized strings before you display it. And that's what I do here. So in the instructions in the property pane, I'm actually able to say, when you get this in, in Power Apps, you'll have to use, you know, param and then the name the parameter. I use the property pane toggle here to actually uh, do some, some interesting stuff. Uh, the property pane toggle is the one that allows you to say, yes, it's on or no, it's off. And that's where I say, do you want dynamic properties? And then what I do here, and again, this is another thing that I don't think a lot of people are aware of, you can actually dynamically display property pane fields in a property pane uh, by just using here in my expression. I'm using if the property, uh, if the dynamic property is true, then display this field. And I'm using a, a dynamic field set which will allow you to pick the source of the dynamic property and uh, and all that stuff. And then this is embarrassingly simple, but on the Power Apps where I render the the app. All I do is I grab the semantic colors. I grab the property, the dynamic property value and the name. And then what I do here is I iterate through all the theme values that have been selected by the user and I pass those values. I just concatenate basically a really ugly URL where I pass uh, in the query string, I pass all the theme values that I wanna, I wanna send to Power Apps. And then I build a really, really ugly frame URL. Again, I, I say ugly. It's actually not that far off from the original uh, URL if you if you paid attention earlier. Uh, but I do add some extra values here. And then I really all I do is I import the same iframe or just render the same iframe with the extra uh, width and height preset and a frame border obviously preset. It's really uh, that simple. Now, I would love, and if anybody on the call knows how to do this, I would love to have access to an API that allows me to retrieve the list of Power Apps because instead of asking users to enter a Power App URL or a Power App ID, I would love to make it a list uh, from a list picker. But I'm also, I, I would love if you have any feedback or any ideas or things that you've been wanting to have in the, uh, Power Apps web part that's not available, please don't hesitate to reach out to me or April uh, and uh, I'll see what I can do about this. Of course, I welcome contributions. Uh, it's on the SPFX web parts uh, repo, so you can look at the code, you can uh, submit PRs, but that's it for me, really. Thank you, April, for demoing this. And April, I don't think you mentioned you have an awesome video on YouTube that walks you through uh, in full details how to create a, a Power App that uses this web part. So we should probably put the link in the chat window. Thank you, everyone. Uh, fantastic uh, demo, really appreciate that.